Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome back to the Pioneer Bible Club. And we are thrilled to have you back with us today. And we are picking up right where we left off last time with the story of King David and all the many adventures that we're finding through God's Word. And the Word of God is such a thrilling book, isn't it, children? And a true book that tells us the truth about men and women who've gone before. And there are some brilliant lessons that we have to learn from these stories. So let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer before we go any further and ask God to meet with us once again and to speak directly to our hearts. How many of you know that you need to hear from God today? Would you raise your hands? Good, and so do I. And I'm asking God to speak to me today as well. Let's bow our heads in prayer and we'll approach our dear Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, we come before thee today and give thanks for another day of life. Help us not to take for granted each day. Help us to recognize that it is a gift from thee. We're thankful, Father, that we're alive and well and healthy, and we do ask of thee to continue to look after us and look over us. We pray especially for the next little time, the next little hour as we spend these moments together studying thy word and singing praise to thy name. Help us, Father, to do all things as unto Thee. When we sing these hymns, may we sing with all of our heart. May we worship and adore Thee. We pray as well that every part of the meeting, every part of the club would be truly honoring and pleasing to Thee. And when we approach that Bible lesson, Father, please speak to our hearts. Soften us now, prepare us now to receive whatever it is Thy Word has for us. Bless these children and bless this club. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, get your Bibles out with me, please, and go ahead and have it open to the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. And we'll continue looking at this beautiful story of David. Welcome to Songs of Joy. The Bible says, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let's sing together, He is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest theme through the ages run, tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world e'er sung, our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though my Helping us today. Hatton, can you tell us what's the next song we're going to sing? There's within my heart a melody. There's within my heart a And today we're going to learn something else about our great God. And we're going to learn today about... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just too loud and too noisy. I tell you what, we've, we've got to move to a different place. We've got to go somewhere else. I can barely hear myself think here. All the noise and all the loudness. Oh, I can barely hear myself think. So I'm going to snap my fingers and we're going to try to go to a place that's a bit more better suited to shoot. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? It's so nice here. In fact, we could probably say that this place is much more peaceful. Wouldn't you agree? And today we're going to talk about how our God is a God of peace. Now, it's, it's nice we can think about this place here. What makes it more peaceful than that busy city that we just left? Oh, yep, that's right. It's, it's certainly quieter. 
There's no one beeping their horns. There's no one yelling at each other. There's no one arguing. There's no one fighting. And if you were to come to a place like this, you would say, oh, this is so peaceful. I can finally relax. And this is a good setting, isn't it, for us to talk about that our God is a God of peace. And I want to read a verse of scripture to you from Psalm chapter 29, verse 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Because our God is a God of peace, he is willing to give peace unto his people. And do you know how he does that? Do you know how he gives us peace? He gives us peace through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we place our faith in him, and we are justified by faith, the Bible says that we can have peace with God. That means we can be right with God. We don't have to fight against God. And one day, if we believed in him, we'll have a home in heaven. And heaven will be a wonderful place. It will be even so much more peaceful than this lovely scene behind us here. There will be a place with no wars, no fightings, no arguing at all. It will be a place of perfect peace. So remember that today, children, especially when we come to our Bible lesson a little bit later, that our God is a God of peace. Well, I hope you all have a nice day. I'm going to sit back here and relax in this lovely, peaceful place. Alrighty, it's time for the grand finale. We have been working through this verse and we are now coming to the very last words. And these last words are the climax, they're the pinnacle, they're the big gusto of this verse. They really uh, bring it all to one point. And so I hope that you guys are ready for that. But before we get to this, let's go ahead and review these first several lines that we have learned. Psalm 61 verses 1 and 2, and we will say, all the way to this blue. Okay, are you guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Psalm chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed. Psalm chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. Very good. Okay, these last couple of lines say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. But before that, David is talking about his cry to the Lord. He's saying his heart is overwhelmed. And I don't know if, if you're like me, but my heart definitely gets overwhelmed. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm happy and then I'm sad and then I'm angry and then I'm confused. And then I'm like a restless sea sometimes. I'm here, there and everywhere. But this last verse, it the last couple of lines says, lead me to the rock. I wonder why it's talking about a rock. Now, I have got a rock here with me, and I'm going to need somebody. <laughs> be... Are you talking about my rock here? Um, no, not that rock, sorry. Oh. Um, we are talking, we're going to show you a rock, but I'm going to need someone who is very strong and manly and got big muscles okay. and that can help me pick up this really heavy rock. Does anybody, can anybody help me? Ready, anybody ready. at home? Anyone? Ready, Any look, at look at that. Yeah, I'll help you. Okay, I, I guess I guess you could do it, yeah. If you could um, use your muscles and pick up that really big rock. <laughs> now it really is a very, very heavy, strong, Great looking rock, don't you think? Now, why? Uh, what is some characteristics of a rock? Is, uh, what do you think? Heavy. Heavy. This one's heavy. Now, they're quite firm, aren't they? They're very strong. And the rock that we are talking about is an unmovable rock. Do you know why? Because the rock that David is talking about that he wants to be led to is not just a rock like this. He's talking about somebody. Do you know? He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock. He is unmovable. He is steadfast. He is firm. And he is who we are able to cling to when we and our life are full of, is full of troubles and distress and all things like that. We can cling to the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if you know that rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you trusted him personally? to save you from your sins? Are you able to cling to him in your times of trouble? I hope that's you. And if it's not, I hope that today is the day that you come to the Lord Jesus. 
But we've learned that part of the verse. Now I we... think we should get rid of this rock first. Yeah, I think let you me can just, put that down if you like. Let me just... Uh... Oh! 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 That rock was heavy. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. All right, let's just cut to the quick here. We need to add some actions to this. So let's see here. Lead me to the rock. I think what we'll do, everybody go ahead and find yourself a partner, maybe a brother, a sister, a nan, a grandpa, a mother, a father, somebody there in your house, maybe your babysitter, and you might need them to grab them. And we're going to do this for lead. Lead me to the rock. Everybody will do that. Rock that is higher than I. Okay, you guys think you can do that? And we are going to run through this once, and then I think we're going to have a little bit of a boy-girl competition and see how you do. So let's start on the count of three with the new actions. One, two, three. Psalm, Psalm chapter, chapter 61, 61, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Psalm chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. Very good. The girls have got it. The guys are going to definitely do this one. So I think we'll do it this way. The ladies can do the red. Mm -hmm. And the boys can do the blue, and I think everybody can do the white, okay? Sounds good to me. Here we go, on the count of three. One, two, three. Psalm chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. Psalm chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. Very good, boys and girls. I don't know who the winner is, but maybe at your house, maybe it was the boys, maybe it was the girls. I don't know. But we are thankful that you guys have joined us for this verse. Please seal it in your heart. And like Miss Joanna said, have you anchored yourself in the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, who we know is higher than us all? Hello boys and girls and welcome to the Pioneer Bible Club's prayer time. We want to hear from you with your prayer requests. Make sure you send them in by going to our website, get your mum and dad to help you, cchtrust.org.uk. But at this time, we're gonna pray for a country today. We're gonna pray for the country of Ukraine. And to help us to know how we can pray, we've asked a friend of ours to share with us now. My name is Yulia. I live in Ukraine in a large Christian village. Please pray for my country, my village and families. Please pray for our church, for young believers, for sick people, for family who lost low advance, for family who doesn't know your. Please pray for my very non-Christian uncle. Also, we need rain. Thank you very much. Glory to God. Very good, boys and girls. It was good there to hear from our friend there and how we can pray for the country of Ukraine. Let's pray together for that country and let's pray together that today God will speak to you and he'd help you. Let's pray together, shall we? Ready? A, very good. B, very good. C. Heavenly Father, we come before thee today. We're thankful that we can pray and we can bring every single care to thee, Lord. We think of that hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. And Lord, we pray that you'd help us even today to speak to thee, Lord, throughout the day. Help us to find times um, on this day, Lord, where we can spend just a little time with thee. Maybe um, help these boys and girls that are watching today to know how to do that, Lord. Help them, we pray. And Lord, we do pray for the country of Ukraine. We're thankful for what we've just heard. And Lord, we just pray for that country. We ask thee that many Christians would be strengthened. We ask you that, Lord, many souls would be saved. Lord, please work and do great and mighty things in that land. Lord, we pray for more churches and Sunday schools to be started. Lord, please do that work, we pray in Ukraine. We know that, Lord, it is your desire that all the earth may know. And so, Lord, we pray that for Ukraine. So, Lord, bless this club today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember, to pray together throughout the week. And also we'll see you again on Sunday. Send in your prayer requests and we'll share them together. God bless you. See you again soon on the Pioneer Bible Club's prayer time.
Today I want to introduce you to a woman who took a great stand for her faith and to help others during World War II. And her name is Corey Ten Boom. Have you ever heard of Corey Ten Boom? Well, I'm sure many of you know a lot about her or something about her, but I've got a special friend actually who's from the area, doesn't live too far from where Corey Ten Boom lived, and she's going to tell us today about the life of Corey Ten Boom. So grab your things, you know the drill. Let's go. Corey Ten Boom lived with her father and her sister during the Second World War in Haarlem. They got arrested for hiding Jewish people in their house, which was not allowed at that time. She and her sister were brought to a concentration camp. And maybe as you know, in a concentration camp, they treated you really bad. Corrie and her sister suffered a lot. After the war, Corrie Tambom traveled around the world to tell about how God worked in her life. Once she was in Berlin, she met a man who said to her, don't you know me? First of all, she didn't recognize him, but then she knew it. It was one of the cruelest officers in that concentration camp. He said to her, Miss, I read my Bible and I learned. God can forgive me my sins. He can forgive the whole world their sins. And he has forgiven me my sins. And I asked the Lord for an opportunity to ask forgiveness to one of those who were in that concentration camp. So I will ask you, can you forgive me? Will you forgive me? First of all, Corrie ten Boom couldn't forgive him. She could not. He hate, she hated him. He had made the suffering of her sister worse. But then she recognized something about, about what's in Matthew. When you do not forgive those who have sinned against God and sinned against you, my Heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. And then she knew she was guilty. She needs forgiveness. Then she recognized another verse. The love of God is showed brought into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which is given to us. Do you know what Jesus actually say? Love your enemies. And then she knew it. She, she need forgiveness and she had forgiven him. She loves him. That was amazing to learn about Corey Ten Boom. I think it would be incredibly difficult to forgive somebody that had done that many wrong things to me. But we find that that's only the true way to have peace, isn't it? True peace is only through forgiveness. And it's a wonderful reminder. Every time we get angry, even as Corey Ten Boom did, may we remember that while we were yet sinners and angry against God, Christ Jesus died for us. I'll see you next time on Christian Heritage for Today. <music>Good afternoon, boys and girls. We've been studying the Word of God and David. And today we're going to talk about David and his sling. In Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, it reads, His sling was in his hand. He took his staff and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag. He had even in a script, and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The sling is not for holding a bad arm. When injured or dislocated, David did not have a bad arm. The sling was a weapon. It could kill. It could kill an animal. It could kill a man used with great skill. The sling was simple in making. It was made from wool of sheep or made from long hair woven together to make it strong with the pouch here to hold the stone. The sling could be small or large or even bigger. 
depending on what it was designed to do. It had no fixed standard and so was personal to everyone. The sling needed smooth stones, which had to be found, normally in a river or brook. Water over many years had worn down the sharp edges, perfect for flight in the air and giving the person great accuracy to hit the target. This sling was purchased in Bethlehem in Israel and the people there 40 years ago showed me how to do it. It's pretty easy to hold. That part there goes over your finger so when you let go of the sling the sling doesn't go with the stone. The stone goes in there and this piece here you hold it across here and then when you wind it round very fast you just move your finger off the thumb off and out the stone flies. Let's go and see if we can do one and have a try. In the Bible there's a verse in Judges chapter 20 and verse 16 about a sling. It says among the people in an army there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at a hair's breadth and not miss. Now a hair's breadth is so thin and these people were so skilled that they could hit a stick at a hair's breadth and not miss. That's unbelievable isn't it? But there again, even when the Roman Empire sent its troops across and came to England, you know they used slings. They would sling lead bullets at the enemy. And scientists have worked out that the force they slung them out of their slings was as powerful as a small gun. David was skilled in many things, such as the sling, the playing of the harp, being a shepherd, and later becoming a king. But I'm sure if he was here today, he would tell you of his love for his God, for his trust in his God, and the promise of his Saviour to come, the Lord Jesus. For he writes much about it in the Psalms. And in Psalm 128, it says, Blessed or happy is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Tell me, are you walking in God's ways? Are you trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ? road here. I've even, I've even heard a few cars go by, but it's led me. I think we're getting close to make it back to the Pioneer Review game. Thank you so much for all the clues you've helped me find, but I cannot find this next clue the map has led me to. Do you see it anywhere? I can't find the next clue. You say, come more that way. Okay, um, I still don't see it. Over here, no. Okay, there it is. Well done, thank you very much. And we have our next question. The question is, what missionary inspired Mary Slessor to go to Africa? Do you know the answer? Oh, the answer is David Livingston. Well done. It's getting dark, so we better hurry and follow the map. All right, children, the maps led me here, but it got dark 
And I just don't know if I'm going to keep be able to keep going to find the next clue. I, I just, I don't think I'm close to where I'm supposed to be. I don't see a clue near me or anything like that. You say, what's that? You see the clue near me? Where? No, it's not over there. <gasps> it is. Look, it's the next clue. Oh, it's been getting very cold. I've had to make a campfire tonight. I might have to stay all night before we get back to the Pioneer Review game. All right, children, here's your question. In the lesson series about Our God Is, the question asked is concerning the story of a prisoner who saved his guard even though the guard was very nasty towards him. And by saving him, he showed him what? Our God is what? Do you know? If you guessed merciful, well done, all right. We've got the next part of the map, but I think, I think I'm not going to be able to see it. We may have to sleep through the night. All right, let's go. So children, just before I was falling asleep tonight, I've discovered that there's more in our last clue. Look very carefully. There's another question in the clue. And I think if we get this question, we might make our way back to the Pioneer Review. We've had quite the exploration this week. And so thank you so much for all your help in finding me my way back. But, but we're not there yet. I have one more question for you. Are you ready? All right, very good. So the question is... The question... Oh, I think you might know this. this. is from the life of David. So David was found someone in a cave. And he could have killed him but he showed mercy to who? Who did David show mercy to? Do you know the answer? Do you know who David showed mercy to? Saul! Well done! All right! And I think this is the way back. We'll see you next time.
1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 23 to 33 And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man as being even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal for, for is his name, and folly is with him. But, but I, thine handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, who now descend. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging, avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and may that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young man that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all, the, all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul, but for the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, then sh the them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord sh shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that the that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which has keepest me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging, avenging myself with mine own hand. Hello boys and girls. My name is Jessica Wadley and my husband and I are missionaries in North Bay, Ontario, Canada. I am so happy to be bringing you the lesson from God's Word today about how God is continuing to show His faithfulness to David and how a situation that could have been really, really bad, God actually worked and instead of there being a conflict, the Lord brought peace into David's life. So we're going to start in 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse 1. And verse 1 of 1 Samuel 25 says this, And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. So this story starts very sad. Samuel was the great prophet of Israel and it, the Bible tells us that he died. And I'm sure David was very saddened by this because Samuel was the one that had told David and had anointed him that he was going to be the next king of Israel. So David takes his men and they go into Paran, into the wilderness, and they come to a place called Carmel. And in Carmel, they meet a man who is very great. And the Bible says he has great possessions. It says in verse 2, he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was in Carmel shearing his sheep and shearing his goats. The Bible tells us what this man's name was. It says, now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail. And the Bible tells us something about Nabal in verse 3. It tells us that he was a churlish man. What does that mean? It means he was not a nice person. He was a wicked man. He didn't love God, and he didn't follow God. But the Bible also tells us something about Nabal's wife, Abigail. It says that she was a woman of good understanding. So David is in this wilderness. He hears about Nabal who has great possessions and he sends his messengers to Nabal. 
he says to his men, get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say unto him that liveth in prosperity, peace be both to thee and peace to thine house and peace be unto all that thou hast. Isn't that a lovely greeting, boys and girls, to say peace, to pray that peace would be on you and your house and everything that you have? Well, David's messengers went to Nabal and they were going to request a gift from Nabal because his men had protected Nabal's flocks and his servants while they were in the wilderness. And David said, we should go ask him for a gift um, because that is a proper thing to do in that time and we'll greet him with peace and we'll ask for this gift. So that's what David's men did. But when they got to where Nabal was and they gave him the greeting that David had said, Nabal was not very happy. Now remember, the Bible says that Nabal was a churlish man and Nabal, he did not follow God. So when David's messengers came, Nabal was not kind in return. And David's men had been very kind to Nabal and protected his sheep and flocks. Nabal said, I'm not giving you any of my stuff. I'm not giving you a gift. I'm not sharing my possessions with you. And in fact, if you wanted to buy my possessions, I wouldn't give them to you. So David's men turn and they go back to David and they tell him what Nabal said. And David got very angry because that was not the right thing to say. And David told his men to get ready and they were going to go to battle. They were going to fight against Nabal and they were going to destroy him and destroy his house and destroy his family. And David was not happy at all. Well, do you remember what the Bible said about Nabal's wife, Abigail? Remember it said she was a woman of good understanding? Well, Abigail heard what was going on and she came up with a plan. One of the servants came to Abigail and said, these men came, Abigail, and they were good to us and they were kind to us and his men protected us. They were a wall to us. They were a protection to us. They helped us. And Abigail, this is not good. Nabal is not going to end well if we don't do something. So do you know what Abigail did? She had a plan. Abigail gets together a wonderful gift, food, supplies, provisions. She puts it all together, but she doesn't tell her husband. And she takes it to David and to his men in the wilderness. And when she found David, the Bible says that Abigail bowed down before him and she apologized and she said to him, please don't listen to what my master said, what my husband said. We all know that he's not a kind man and we don't want trouble with you. We don't want to fight with you. We want to live in peace. We want to be kind and we don't want to have this war and this battle right now. Please accept my gift and please, I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. This is in verse 28. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Abigail told David, We know who you are, David. My husband is foolish. He thinks he's better than God's anointed king, future king of Israel. But please accept this gift and please don't come and fight my family. And please save us, David. We don't want this conflict. Well, do you know what David did? Did he change his mind? Did he go and say, I don't want your gift and I'm just going to fight Nabal? No, David didn't do that. David was a godly man and he wanted to follow the Lord. And he listened to Abigail and he accepted her gift and he accepted her apology. David realized that what Abigail was saying was right that he shouldn't go fight Nabal. And David realized that causing a conflict in a war was not the right thing, that there should be peace and that he should listen to Abigail. And he turned and he left that path of war that he had been on and that path of conflict. And he went back to where his men were and they didn't fight Nabal and they didn't destroy his house and they didn't destroy his family and his possessions, even though Nabal had been very unkind. And Abigail, because she was of good understanding and because she had wisdom and because she did the right thing, she saved her family that day from that conflict. Well, 
the story doesn't end there because you know what? God is always going to judge sin and God wasn't going to let Nabal get away with being such a wicked man. And the Bible says that Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal and he died. You know, boys and girls, God says that you can't live in sin and rebellion against God and not be punished. And Nabal was a wicked man and he rejected God and he was sinful. We read about the awful things that he did in the story. And when Abigail told him, David was going to come and he was going to destroy you. And I saved you because I went out there and I apologized for you and I did what was right. And Nabal's heart, the Bible says it became a stone within him. And then 10 days later, he died. He was so shocked by this. And God protected Abigail and protected her family. And God judged Nabal for his wickedness. And God kept David from doing something that maybe he might have regretted later on. He kept him from starting this war and this conflict. And instead, he allowed David to keep peace with Abigail and with Nabal and with their household. And I want you to remember that, boys and girls. I want you to remember that the peace of God is what we should strive for in our lives. We should not get angry and try to take revenge on people, but instead we should live in peace and we should be always looking to God to do what is right and to guide us. And be like Abigail. Be a woman of good understanding and follow the Lord. Bible Club, we are so, so thankful that you guys joined us today. I hope that you are commenting. I hope you are liking. I hope you have subscribed and shared and that you are sharing this with your friends and your family and whoever else you know. We are just so thankful that you have joined us today. And we know that we have a very special Sunday edition of Pioneer Sunday School Bible, Bible Club coming up on Sunday just a couple of days away at two o'clock in the afternoon. And I hope that you guys will join us. That means that today is the last chance for any of you to submit your coloring sheet for the Monday competition. So if you haven't done it yet, you need to go to cchtrust.org.uk and download a coloring sheet, color it in, go back up on the cchtrust.org.uk and upload it so that you can have a competition to win. While you were there, maybe you don't have a Bible yet. I hope that you would go up there and request to have a copy of God's Word sent to your house. We would love for each and every one of you to have your very own copy of God's Word. And we know that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we hope you got one. Also, while you're there, share a prayer request. We have a special share time. If you would like to pray for anything specific, please do, because we would like to pray with you for the things that are on your heart. Maybe it's like the memory verse, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We want to pray with you guys for those things. So thank you again for joining us. Please join us again on Sunday. It was a fantastic club today, wasn't it, children? And I'm glad you were able to watch it with us, and I hope that you'll share it with somebody else. Now let me remind you that today is Friday, and so you have to have your coloring sheet submitted by the end of today if you want to have a chance at winning the coloring competition this week. So make sure you get your mother and father to take a photograph of that coloring sheet and send it in to us and we'll let you know as soon as possible on Monday who has won the coloring competition for this week. But let's go ahead and stop. We'll wrap things up with a word of prayer. We'll give thanks to our Father in heaven and pray that he'll seal these truths in our hearts. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful that we have been gathered together like this today, and we're thankful for the word that we have studied. And oh, how true it is that thou art able to protect us and deliver us and carry us through every chapter of life. And I pray that these boys and girls would come to understand that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and he's able not just to deliver them from difficulty, 
and troublesome times, but also to deliver their soul from sin and destruction. And I pray that each one of those children would call upon the name of Jesus Christ, would put their faith and trust in Him, and be born again. Save the souls of these little children who are watching and their parents as well, and extend our influence and this message throughout all the world. Bless us and keep us safe and bring us back together again very soon. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching today, boys and girls. And I hope that you'll join us on Sunday at what time? That's exactly right, 2 o'clock. I'll see you on Sunday afternoon.